with the holiday season in full force, I often find myself playing the Batman Arkham series, specifically Origins. They're great games, but for today's video, I'd like to address something that's been bothering me about them. In particular, how the games miss the mark in betraying each respective Robin. Spoilers ahead. Now usually, the Arkham games does a pretty good job of accurately portraying its comic book characters, even going as far as improving what came before. I mean, all you have to look at is what they did with Calendar Man, transforming a joke C-tier supervillain into a legitimately threatening Hannibal Lecter-esque serial killer, simply through stellar voice acting, well-written dialogue, and a cool easter egg type mystery. It's 29. On Christmas Day, the Red Man comes. A bloody X marks the spot. What do you want for Christmas, Batman? A new toy? A car, maybe? Will you sit with your family and enjoy the season? So, it is all the more baffling that the series never really hits the mark with all three boy wonders. Grayson, Todd, and Drake are all largely misrepresented, I feel, by the writers of the games. Let's start with the least egregious example of this, being Dick Grayson. Now, while Grayson may be the best of the Robins, the main issue is generally how underutilized he is within the story. As Nightwing, he is largely unseen throughout the Arkham games, outside of the DLC. This makes sense, as he is often doing things on his own in Bloodhaven at the time. But like with many things, once you get into Arkham Knight, it becomes extra questionable. Like Gotham is completely sieged by a paramilitary force, threatening to gas the entire east coast of America, and Nightwing is barely present for it outside of few missions. This to me always felt like a great narrative misstep, and that Nightwing should have much more importance to the story as he does in the game. Like thematically, Bruce hanging up the cape and passing down the torch fits Nightwing perfectly. He's already done it in the comics before, and the game makes it crystal clear that Batman dies tonight. So logically, Nightwing ought to be next in line or at least have greater significance to the plot, but instead, he was largely on the sidelines for the majority of the game. Not only that, but having Grayson there in the story would have made the Arkham Knight more interesting as a character, with the vengeful and bitter Jason Todd interacting with the more compassionate and understanding Dick Grayson. Their dynamic, as representations of Bruce's greater success and failure, always kept the comics engaging. And would have been very interesting to see this element play out in the game itself. Additionally, another odd factor about Grayson as a character is how often he is used as a punching bag for other characters. Like this is supposed to be Batman's son, someone who in the comics was able to outright beat both Batman and Deathstroke in a one-on-one -on -one fistfight, but in the games he loses to Harley Quinn and is taken hostage by the Penguin. Like, this is how easy it is for Batman to defeat both Harley and the Penguin. I know it's for story reasons, but it's so weird how heavily nerfed he is in games. Moving on to the next Robin, Jason Todd, Arkham Knight just mishandles him and the Red Hood storyline so thoroughly it's astounding. Gone are Jason's attempts to test Bruce's moral and ethical code, forcing Bruce to choose between saving his son and killing his arch enemy. What he's done in the past, blindly, stupidly disregarding the entire graveyards he's filled, the thousands who have suffered, the friends he's crippled. You know, I thought, I thought I'd be the last person you'd ever let him hurt. If it had been you that he'd beat to a bloody pulp, if he had taken you from this world, I would have done nothing but search the planet for this pathetic pile of evil death-worshipping garbage. Arkham Knight's Jason feels almost illogical and ignorant to his own actions. Following the plans of Scarecrow to kill literally millions, just to spite his adoptive father, Todd feels less like a threat and more like an angsty teen lashing out violently not helped by how easily Batman is able to overpower his former protege during their boss fight. You're Robin, Jason. You're not what he made you. Stop! Stop! 
Stop talking to me! In the comics and animated movie, Jason was a genuine threat, consolidating power within Gotham, trolling the underworld and killing all those who opposed him. He was a comprehensive rebuttal of everything Batman stood for and presented a perfect counter-argument to Bruce's no-kill rule. You had to come back. Why? I'm not talking about killing Penguin or Scarecrow or Dent. I'm talking about him. Just him. And doing it because... Because he took me away from you. The reason why Arkham series Red Hood gets it so wrong is that Jason feels inconsistent, hating Bruce with a burning passion, switching sides less than three hours after a brief conversation, despising the murderers and criminals of Gotham, while previously aiding and abetting in an almost catastrophic terrorist event. For all the build up to the big reveal, Todd feels like an undercooked character, desperately needing more time to be fleshed out in his characterization. It honestly felt like Rocksteady didn't know how evil to make the night and how to properly redeem his character believably. Instead, the Arkham games ended up paving over all the nuances and elements that make Jason's character compelling. Todd in the game almost becomes a zombified version of the character, having some of the trademarks of him without any of the narrative weight or depth. And finally, we have my personal favorite Robin, Tim Drake. What makes Tim unique in the comics is his characterization. He isn't motivated solely by a deep personal trauma, and he didn't inherit the title. Tim volunteered to be the Blue Wonder, as from his perspective, Batman needed a Robin. Keep in mind, this was after the death of the previous Robin, Jason Todd, and Drake had to force his way into the Bat family. What Tim represents in the Batman mythos is triumph over tragedy, perseverance with continued hope for the future that the next generation can lend a helping hand to the old and tired, even at their lowest moments. This fact would be reflected in Tim's dynamic with Bruce, as instead of Batman taking in a frightened and traumatized child, it's Tim ready to be the Robin to Bruce's Batman, doing away with the standard father-adoptive-son relationship, and said they function more as equal partners, Tim's more youthful optimism balancing out Bruce's brooding demeanor. And none of this is in the games, like at all. Arkham Tim is brash, arrogant, overconfident, and always, at all times, butting heads with the Batman. The partner dynamic is gone, the optimism almost non-existent. He feels like a weird alternate, Jason Todd or Damien, if anything else, only making his character more generic and less interesting as the story goes on. In addition to this, Drake's relationship with Barbara Gordon has almost no chemistry whatsoever. Like, it could work better if Tim was more cheerful like Nightwing, having them banter and bounce off one another. But as it stands, this version of Drake is just too self-serious and dry for the two of them to make an interesting match. Another way they could have made it work is if they emphasized Tim's intelligence, like in the comics, having Oracle and him share a common affinity for playing detective. But yet again, this element goes largely neglected as Tim has very few moments where he actually gets to display his investigational prowess. Like in the comics, Tim isn't he equal to Batman. In his first appearance, he was able to discern his secret identity as a preteen, something even geniuses such as Lex Luthor were largely clueless about. This is all mostly absent in the games. Especially disappointing as Tim's intelligence is one of the most defining aspects of his character and sets him apart from the other Robins. Arkham Tim is simply not the same Tim Drake by almost any means, including his god awful buzz cut. So you might be asking, why or how? How did Rocksteady get these pretty prominent characters so utterly wrong? And why does this only happen to the Robins? Honestly, I think it has to do with the structure of these games, most specifically with Arkham Knight. Arkham Asylum and City were relatively contained standalone affairs, with Robin acting on the sidelines. But in Arkham Knight, the stakes were raised dramatically, and the story became grander and significantly messier 
with Rocksteady being forced to juggle various Robins, plotlines, villains, and side characters while paying off an entire trilogy of games. Due to this, I think the Robins were largely left on the cutting room floor, having their importance reduced and aspects of their characterization taking out so they could better fit the Arkham narrative better. Ironic because this choice to me only serves to make the narrative more messier and less polished. Having beloved characters act and behave in ways jarring and even at times illogical, all for the sake of moving the plot forward. But hey, that's just my two cents on the matter. Merry Christmas and see you in the new year.